If you already know how to subtract fractions with unlike denominators, then subtracting mixed numbers with unlike denominators is going to be a pretty easy transition. So let's do this step by step. If you think back to the fractions, if you have a fraction problem like 3 fourths minus 1 eighth, you know that you can't subtract eighths from fourths. The denominators and the fractions have to be the same when you add or subtract them. And so what we do is we make an equivalent fraction. And to do that, you have to multiply either one or both of the fractions in order to come up with the same common denominator. Now always look at the fractions first and see, can I change this denominator from the fraction with the smaller digit in the denominator, in this case 4? I want to know, can I change that 4 into the 8 by multiplying? Is there something I can multiply 4 by to get 8? In this case, yes, I can. In this case, I can multiply 4 times 2. And what we have to do is we have to do the same thing to the numerator and denominator of the fraction. What we're really doing here is this 2 halves is really 1. This 2 halves is 1. So we're not changing the value of this fraction at all. What we're doing is changing how it looks. So now if I multiply 3 times 2, I get 6. 4 times 2, I get 8. Now I can have 6 eighths minus this 1 eighth, and I get 5 eighths. And that's the kind of problem that we've already done. So if we take that a step further, and we have a problem like, 5 and 3 fourths minus 1 and 1 eighth. It's going to go the same way as the fraction problem. It's going to start exactly the same way. We're going to look at the fractions first. So we have this fraction side that is 3 fourths minus 1 eighth right there. So we're going to work with that side first. We already did that work over here. We looked at that. And we said, I can multiply 3 fourths times 2 halves, which is 1. 2 halves is equal to 1. So not changing the value of the fraction, just changing how it looks. 3 fourths times 2 halves, multiplying straight across, we get 6 eighths. Now this 6 eighths minus 1 eighth, we can do. And if you want to look at the whole problem written again, you would actually, it actually comes out now, it's, the problem has changed to 5 and 6 eighths, because we made this 6 eighths up here, minus 1 and 1 eighth. 6 eighths minus 1 eighth is 5 eighths, just like we did on this side. 5 minus 1, now we're going to take care of the whole number part. 5 minus 1 is 4. And I just rewrote this problem over here so that you could see all of the steps. Now let's do another problem like that. Let's take the problem 6 and 5 sixths and subtract 2 and 2 thirds. Remember we're trying to make the denominators the same. We need a common denominator. So again I'm going to look and say can I change, I, I look at my denominators, this one's a 3, this one's a 6, can I change the 3? into 6 by multiplying? Answer is yes. I'm going to multiply in this case again it's 2. And again that 2 halves, I'm just drawing this to remind you that 2 halves is 1. So I'm going to change this 2 thirds into 4. 2 times 2 is 4. 6. 5 6 minus 4 6 is 1 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. That's the easiest kind of problem. Now, sometimes you'll have to change both fractions. Well, let's look at a couple of examples of that. So my problem this time is going to be 8 and 4 sixths minus 2 and 1 fourth. Now, in this case, when I look at the denominator of 4, the denominator of 6, I can't change 4 into 6 by multiplying. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to try to find a number that I can make both of those into by multiplying. I need a common factor. 
I need a common multiple. Excuse me. I need a common multiple. The easiest way to do it, the way a lot of students like to do it, is just to take this bottom denominator and multiply it up here with the top fraction. Take the top denominator and multiply it by the bottom fraction. And it's okay to do that. If you do it that way, you're going to come up with 16 24 multiplying straight across. And here, 1 times 6 is 6, 4 times 6 is 24. We do have a common denominator. 16 24 minus 6 24 is 10 24 and 8 minus 2 is 6. Now in my class we haven't started to talk about reducing or uh, making fractions into lowest terms yet. So I would accept this as an answer right now, but later on we would then need to take this 10 24 and make it into lowest terms. And if we're careful about how we change the fraction, we can actually do that ahead of time. Let me give you an example with using the same problem. 8 and 4 6 minus 2 and 1 fourth. If I stop and think about the multiples of the denominators, and I say to myself, okay, I can't make 4 into 6 by multiplying, but what's the next multiple of 6? Well, the next multiple of 6 is 12. 6 times 2 is 12. I know I can make 6 into 12. Can I make 4 into 12? Yes, I can. I can make them both into 12. So instead of doing a bigger number like I did on the left-hand side over here, I can say, let me multiply this fraction times 2 halves and this fraction times 3 thirds. Both 2 halves and 3 thirds are really equal, really equal to 1. So both of these are equal to 1 not changing what the fraction value is, just changing how it looks. 4 times 2 is 8, 6 times 2 is 12, 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 3 is 12, 8 twelfths minus 3 twelfths is 5 twelfths, and 8 minus 2 is 6. And this 5 twelfths is, and 10 24 these are actually equivalent fractions. The 5 twelfths fraction is lowest terms. So that's the way you do subtracting mixed numbers with unlike denominators. So let's look at the steps. Step 1. Make the denominators the same by multiplying. Step 2. Subtract the fractions. Step 3. Subtract the whole numbers. Reduce to lowest terms.